everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours, because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful tree kangaroo. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Alex, Yasmin, Caden, Laurel, Kumar, Kirsty, Butler, and Geraldine. Thank you all for taking the time to request this animal, and I hope you enjoy your very own episode. For how to request your very own episode, and for all of the facts that were used in this one, all of that info is in the description or the show notes, but I will also go over it at the end of the show. If you want to relax with even more animal facts, you can go to patreon.com slash relax with animal facts. For only a dollar a month, you get access to everything, including voting for next episodes once a month. And so I look forward to seeing you there. The wonderful ambiance that we will be enjoying together in a moment is courtesy of George Vlad. He has an awesome YouTube channel where he uploads all of these sounds, and I encourage all of you to go in the description and check it out. I also have his website linked as well. And now let us begin to wind down a little bit. If you are a new listener, welcome to the Animal Podcast family. For those of you returning, you know what I am going to be asking of you. As always, I have three primary exhortations for you. The first is that you grab a pair of versatile hiking or running shoes. We are going to be needing those for where we are going today. The second thing I ask is just to direct your attention to perhaps where you are carrying some tension. It is most commonly up near the shoulders, near the neck, but everybody here is different. Regardless of where you carry your tension, do your best to just relax it. Sometimes it's even helpful to just scan through your feet up to your head to notice maybe where you are clenching or tensing up, and then bring up in your mind perhaps some jello and do your best to impersonate it. Really go for the gusto and become that jello. And the third thing I ask of you is to give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into a lowland rainforest in Papua New Guinea where the tree kangaroo resides. As we are looking for this amazing creature, it is also equally amazing to have the kind of accompaniment that the natural world provides. We live in a musical world and everyone is participating. We may not be singing like the birds or calling out like the primates, but we still join into the music with the breaking of leaves and twigs beneath our feet, creating a new and unique piece that has yet to be heard before. But now let us direct our attention to the tree kangaroo. The term tree kangaroo is its common name. Its scientific name is Dendrologus. As is nearly always the case, this scientific name has some Greek or Latin origins. That word Dendrologus can be broken up into Dendro and Lagus. Dendro in Greek means tree, while Lagus means hair. Not hair as in H-A-I-R, like the stuff on her head, but like rabbits those cute little creatures that hop and skip, and so their scientific name seems to imply they are a tree rabbit or a tree hare of some kind. And from a quick glance at their appearance, we can see how this would have been understood. And the reason we are here in Papua New Guinea is because this is one of the native territories of the tree kangaroo. They live in lowland and mountainous rainforests, not only in Papua New Guinea, but also in Indonesia and far north of Queensland, Australia. If you have never seen them before and have abstained from any Google searching, they look like a cross between a lemur and a kangaroo. 
They have these shorter legs, but quite strong forelimbs that are used for climbing. As their name suggests, their anatomy is well suited for life in the trees. And the tree kangaroo is in fact the only macropod that lives in trees. The term macropod is simply describing the family macropodidae, which is a family of marsupials that includes familiar faces like wallabies and kangaroos, quokkas, a lot of those creatures that we have already covered on the podcast. But as we have learned on those respective episodes, none of them live in trees with the exception of the one we are learning about today. So all of these macropods are native to the Australian continent, to New Guinea, and to some of those nearby islands. In fact, as recent as 1990, there was a new species of tree kangaroo discovered. In the Torricelli Mountains of Papua New Guinea, they discovered the golden-mantled tree kangaroo. The reason it took so long to find them is because they have been sort of sent out or excluded from 99% of their once historic range. It might be odd to us to consider that we found a new species such as this one not somewhere deep in the ocean, but rather somewhere skipping around on the trees. It is not really a very small animal, especially not relative to insects, So what took so long that, as recent as 1990, we found them? So what exactly took us so long to find them? Well, the fact is that the golden-mantled tree kangaroo is currently living in 1% of its historical range. That means it is absent from 99% of the area that it used to occupy. Things like interfering with habitat and whatnot has led them to be quite isolated, and due to the nature of the low populations of tree kangaroos, we still have much to learn, and so there might even in the future be a need to update this episode as we go. There are about 14 species of tree kangaroo, ranging from one that we have already talked about, the Lumholtz tree kangaroo, This one is between 48 to 65 centimeters, or 19 to 26 inches in length, and this can be compared to the largest of the tree kangaroos, the grizzled tree kangaroo, which ranges from between 75 to 90 centimeters, about 30 to 35 inches, weighing up to 15 kilograms, or 33 pounds. And some of you have reached out wondering, Why is it that I often choose to do the broad stroke of tree kangaroos rather than one specific subspecies or species? And the reason is, especially in today's case, that there is often not much material that can be covered on just one single species. An episode would end up being something like six to seven minutes long, and of course there is much still left to be discovered. The tree kangaroo is in fact Australia's largest tree-dwelling mammal, and a descriptor that we can use for largely tree-dwelling animals is arboreal. So these creatures are mostly arboreal. In terms of their behavior, they are mostly diurnal. That means that they are active mostly during the daytime, like the morning or the afternoon, But an interesting characteristic about these guys is that their sleeping patterns might change depending on where they are. Ones that live near human settlements, for example, have been observed to be mostly nocturnal, meaning active during the night time. And today we are deep in this forest in Papua New Guinea and are far from any human settlement, and so we can explore and find them during the daytime. And it is during this time that they will be foraging for fruit and leaves. They will be eating bark, nuts, and sap. They have well-designed special front teeth that they use to cut stems, while their rear molars, meaning their teeth, are good for grinding them down. There are some species of tree kangaroo that will also eat snakes, insects, birds, and eggs, 
making them omnivorous. So while some tree kangaroos are herbivorous, there are those that choose the more omnivorous path. And so while they are looking for things to eat, they are doing so mostly while they are climbing trees. And as we can expect, they have some interesting features that helps them to do that well. They have rubbery soles on their feet that helps them to grip branches. And they have a very long tail that helps them to balance. We have seen this a few times on the podcast already, where the tails aren't there just for show, but they are used for locomotion or for some other purpose. In this creature's case, their tails are used like counterweights. It acts like a pendulum on a huge grandfather clock. It hangs down to lower their center of gravity and makes them very balanced way up from the forest floor. Having this increased stability is a huge bonus. So while they are well suited for the trees, they are not exclusively arboreal. If they need to, they will go down to the earth and walk around, but they are not very agile creatures. Their maximum speed on the ground is about 3 miles per hour or 5 kilometers an hour. This is where their pendulum of a tail doesn't actually work quite well for them. Their tail makes it harder for them to go down to the earth with any kind of agility. They need to be very careful. And it is quite amazing how context really decides whether something is useful or not. In one context, their tails are so useful in keeping them balanced. In another, it is almost like a cumbersome thing. So given their slow hobbling speeds of 3 miles or 5 kilometers an hour, some might think if they even have the ability to jump, and they in fact do jump. They might not have the spring-loaded kind of jump that we see in many cats, for example, but they have been seen leaping from tree to tree that are sometimes as far as 18 meters down, so do not count them out. As all of the animals we have covered on the show, the tree kangaroo is an important part of their environment. By being nutrient recyclers and dispersers of seeds, they help maintain the local ecosystem for all of the other animals that live there too. The natural world is always a finely tuned balance. When one thing changes in an ecosystem, it's not like taking a Jenga block off the top of the tower. A changing of one variable can have huge effects everywhere else in the system and the tree kangaroo helps a lot in the maintenance of their respective ecosystem. The tree kangaroo also takes the gold medal for the longest gestation period of any marsupial. The female Machis tree kangaroo can carry their young for around 45 days. That might not sound like a lot, but in the world of marsupials, that is the longest time. And the babies, like many other Australian native creatures, are called joeys. And these joeys are born barely formed at all, and they have to clamber into the pouch of their mothers in order to fully develop. For reference, the tree kangaroo joey, or baby, is around 2 centimeters long when they are born, and it can stay in the pouch for about a year before it lives independently. That is pretty cool. Now there are some tree kangaroos that are kept in captivity, and the issue is that in these zoo environments they normally do not have access to their fully natural diet. Transporting the flora of Australian rainforests somewhere else can be quite challenging. Their diet includes a lot of plant material that is toxic, and they eat a lot more of this material than other grass-eating, ground-dwelling creatures. And so to keep the tree kangaroo healthy, they have to find ways of ingesting this material. And some zoos have discovered that if they feed tree kangaroos tea leaves, it can often do the trick. And the reason they are able to ingest so much toxic material that for other creatures would be unbearable is because they have a slow metabolism and will digest it slowly. And now let us move on to the etymology of the name. Where does the name come from? 
we could probably deduce why they are called tree kangaroos, given the fact that they mostly spend their time in trees. But the word kangaroo, where does it come from? Well, in the 1770s is when we began using this word to describe large marsupial mammals of Australia. It was used by Captain Cook, not Captain Hook, and the botanist Joseph Banks, and they were supposedly attempting to represent a native word from northeast Queensland, Australia. And this native word is probably from the language Gugu Yimidir. And this is an Endeavour River Area Aboriginal language. And the charity for this episode is from treerurescue.org. They are a non-profit that rescues and rehabilitates injured, orphaned, or displaced tree kangaroos for release back into the wild. When release is not possible, which sometimes happens, they provide the means by which they can spend a comfortable life in captivity and be used, of course, for conservation and educational purposes. The desire of this rescue organization is to educate the public and increase the awareness of the Australian tree kangaroos. And so in the description or the show notes, you can find a link to that if you wish to support them. And now let us move on to the review of the episode. This review is coming from Cindy Beth, who is writing all the way from the United States of America, quite far from where we are today. And Cindy Beth writes, Night after night, relax with animal facts relaxes me and teaches me facts about animals, even when the episode is about an animal I think I know. When I lay down for the night and do my best impression of jello to release my thoughts and tensions of the day, I feel trusting of the podcaster Steph Wolf to melodically, soothingly, earnestly, and informatively usher me into a safe and sound and wiser sleep. Thank you to Steph Wolf and my fellow listeners who help this podcast come to life. What a well-written and very kind review. Cindy Beth, I am so happy that you enjoy the show, that it can be of use to you, and I am so happy that you are a part of what makes this podcast so special. If the show helps you in any way, taking a couple of minutes to leave a review like Cindy Beth did is one of the biggest ways you can help the show. It helps the show grow and to get better. All of your feedback is super important, and I am very grateful for it. To request your very own animal episode, you can go to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and go to the Animal Request section. If you would like to reach out to me for any other reason, you can send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com, or you can go to the Instagram relaxwithanimalfacts and send a message there. For more of the show and voting on episodes and even birthday shoutouts, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts. A huge thank you to George Vlad again who has provided the series of ambiances. Go support his work on YouTube and check out what he is all about. The facts that were used in this episode came from worldwildlife.org, factanimal.com, wa.gov.au, sdzwildlifeexplorers.org, treerurescue.org, and etimonline.com. This episode would not have been possible without these resources, and all of them are in the description of the show. The tree kangaroo really is a cool creature. I feel like this is an animal that not many people know about, and it is a shame because of how many cool things there are to know. I hope that all of you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have, and I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.